معاكم دكتورة مجدة الناظر هنبدأ دلوقتي نتكلم على ال other type of platinum methods which is cystodes class cystoidia or subclass cystoda they are characterized by being dorsoventrally flattened platinum methods يعني they are ribbon like يعني زي الشريط وعشان كده بنسميهم بالعربي الديدان الشريطية طولها بيبقى من مليمترات لغاية أمتار على حسب السبيشيز there is no body cavity because they are flattened also there is no alimentary tract or alimentary canal because this class all of its members are living in the small intestine they have around ready made food which is transported or absorbed through the micro villi covering the whole body surface tegument يتكون من موز سوري بيتكون من covering the whole worm like trematoda but this tegument has micro villi which absorb the nutrients from the intestine Um, it has segmented body because they are long so they must have units or segments in their body the body as a whole is composed of scolic which is the head then the neck which is the germinal part which produces strobula the strobula is made of immature mature and gravid segments as we'll see later the scolex is the head which has fixation organs we call them acetabula or suckers like the suckers of trematoda also there may be grooves or bothria these are the types of fixation organs in the scolex according to them we'll divide the cystodes into bothriocephalus cystodes or pseudophyllidae and this, those who have suckers we call them cyclophyllidae because they have cyclic sucking organs the rostellum is also another another um, uh, constituent of the scolex which is a muscular organ in the top of the scolex retractile in a rostellar sac and usually it has a round a rounded area of spines or hoops which are arranged in one or several lines. Um, there are some glands in the scolex which have special secretions for attachment, also for an, uh, sensory organs or sensory glands, something like this. Then we have the neck, which is the germinal part growing into segments also the strobula which is the segments following each other like a chain or a row of segments the immature near the neck and the they mature as long as they grow and then become mature with both male and female genital systems inside then the gravid segments which has a uterus laden with eggs there is an excretory system which is made mainly of flame cells which collect into tubules and excretory channels alongside the whole trobula also there is a component of the parenchyma special for cystodes 
which is calcareous corpuscles. Calcareous corpuscles are characteristic for cystodes. They are called calcareous because they have calcium carbonate inside the the uh, the the bodies or uh, what we call the the we call them corpuscles or bodies because they are granules inside the parenchyma which is having calcium carbonate in their constituents so we call them calcareous corpuscles they may aid in metabolism or they may aid in immune reactions we don't have known the 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 actual function of these calcareous corpuscles till now there is also the genital system we know that all the trematodes and cystodes are hermaphrodite having both male and female genital system except schistosomes as we studied before this is a diagram which has here the scolex the scolex with the rostellum and the hooks around also these are the suckers in case of cyclophilidae they are four suckers two opposite each other this is the neck and this part is the beginning of strobula with immature segments or immature proglottids as we name them in latin also this is a mature segment with both male and female genital system the genital system is composed of ovary this is a uterus and these scattered segment uh, these scattered bodies are either the testis or the vitelline glands in the same time um, yeah, in the same manner sorry and both testis the, the scattered testes collect into a collecting tubule or vas deferens which here comes in the beginning of the ovarian canal here to fertilize the eggs coming out from the uterus these collect in the blind ended uterus which grows and branches sometimes to form or becomes a big sac to form the gravid segment here are the strobula this is the scolex as we know this is the mature segment here and here is the gravid segments in the posterior end of the world Now we'll know about the larval stages of cystodes. The larval stages of cystodes are either solid stages or they are cystic stages. Solid stages means that they have no cavity inside or no fluid inside and they are flattened. These are either procercoid and Pleurocircoid. This is the next stage of procircoid. What we call these are characteristic for pseudophilidae, which have bothria, and the cystic stages or the stages which have fluid inside. These are the larval stages of cyclophilidae. They are either cysty circus which has a bladder like structure and 
They are found between the muscles of intermediate host. They have single wall, invaginated inverted colics inside a bladder-like structure, which is about one centimeter in diameter. There is also some called cysticercoid. Cysticercoid is a small larval stage present in the body cavity of insect. It has double wall, invaginated scolex, and it is very small, even millimeters in diameter, and it is either circocystic or cryptocystic. Circocystic means it has a tail-like structure, while cryptocystic doesn't have a tail. There is also some big larval stage called conurus or senurus. It is either conurus cerebralis or conurus cerealis, which is present in tissues or in um, parenchymatous organs. Sometimes it may reach the size of a hen's egg, means the diameter is about two to three centimeter with macroscopic scolysis. Scolysis, many scolysis scattered along the inside membrane and they are large in size, about one millimeter in diameter. Uh, there is also the biggest larval stage, the hydatid cyst. The hydatid cyst, it may reach about 20 centimeter in diameter according to its place inside the intermediate host. It is surrounded usually by fibrous capsule made from the host tissue and other layers which are genuine of the larval stage. It has numerous microscopic scolysis, ممكن توصل لألاف كلهم ما بيزيدوش عن 200 ل 300 micromillimeter so they are not seen by naked eye but by naked eye we see them like sand or gravel inside the hydatid cyst. This is the diagram showing the larval stages of cystodes. This one is what is present inside the egg, which is called the hexacanth embryo. When it comes outside the egg, the hooks are, these hooks go out like this, so it's called oncosphere. Onco means spine. So it is oncosphere, a rounded creature with spines around. This one is other, another larval stage which comes, which comes out of the egg, which is called coracidium. Coracidium, coral is المرجان, حيوان المرجان. كانوا فاكرينه الأول زي حيوان المرجان وسموه سيديوم على أساس إنه بيسبح في المية ولي زي ما احنا شايفين أهداب أو لي سيليا around so it is called coracidium. This coracidium comes out the eggs of cyclophilidae as we'll see later. These are the solid larval stages which come out, which grow or develop in case of cyclophilidae. This one is the procercoid keeping its hooks in the posterior end here. And this one is the pleurocercoid, which has bothria in the anterior end here. And it is falsely segmented. Its length is about one to two or three centimeters, while this small creature, which is the procercoid,
doesn't exceed two or three millimeters. Here is the cysty circus. This is the cysty circus, which is membranous and having one invaginated scolex inverted inside it. And this part is full of fluid. This one is the cysty circoid. Also, with invaginated scolex inverted inside it and double wall as we see this and this these are double walls of the cysticircoid and this is the tail of the cysticircoid so this one may be the circocystic cysticircoid This one is the conurus. The conurus has the macroscopic scolices arranged around the inner membrane like this, and it is full of fluid inside. This one is the hydated cyst, and it makes here a daughter cyst also. It is enlarged here to see how it has protoscolices inside which are very small and this is the wall made from the hydatid cyst and this is a fibrous wall made from the host tissues around it. Now we come to the types of cystodes. The first is pseudophilidae, which is represented in man by Diphilobotrium latum. Diphilobotrium latum is called also the broad fish tapworm because it comes from eating fish. Its hosts are men. The definitive host, Cyclops, which is a small crustacean present in fresh water, and salmon or trout fish as the second intermediate host, which gives the infection to men. Uh, Cyclops contains the first larval stage, while salmon or trout fish contains the second larval stage, which is infective to man, which is the sparginum or the pleurocircoid. Its distribution is this present in cold Arctic and subarctic areas, Nawahil Manatak Shamaliya with Janubi Al Barda, Nahitul Kutbi Shamali with Janubi, and these areas are where the fish host is present. اللي هو المكان اللي بتتواجد فيه السالمون ناحية البحيرات الشمالية بتاعت أمريكا الشمالية وفروسيا وفي شمال اليابان مثلا وبعدين في الجنوب ناحية أستراليا ونيوزيلندا والمناطق بتاعت أمريكا الجنوب. This is the life cycle of Diphilobothrium later. Um, we'll find that the adult is present in small intestine here the adult is present here in the small intestine um, while the eggs come out with tools unembryonated they stay in water to become embryonated till the coracidium forms it goes out in water after hatching of the egg here is the cyclops engulfing the coracidium. Inside the cyclops, the coracidium develops into the procercoid larvae, which have the hooks inside 
to penetrate into the other host intestine. This is the other host is a small salmon or trout fish which can eat the cyclops and have the prosercoid to develop into lyrocercoid. Then the larger fish eats the small fish. So the small fish here it is called paratenic host in this case and a predator larger fish eats it to be eaten by men and giving man the infection with the lyrocercoid. This is the life cycle of Diphilobothrium latum. So we must know about its. The adult is about three to 10 meters long according to the place and the infection. Um, Scolex is about two to three millimeter. And we'll see here there are the Bothria. It is a groove like which sucks a part of intestine inside it to fix the big worm. A mature segment here. We can see that this is the branch of uterus, this is the ovary, and the testis and the vitiline glands are scattered all over the segment. Here and here in the in the dorsal and ventral parts of the parenchyma we can not see here what we have to know that the uterus here has a pore maybe this one which is called the uterine pore and another pore is present also which is the genital pore here and this one is concerned with fertilization of the eggs from another worm or from the previous scolis, uh, uh, strobula, or, sorry, from the previous, previous segments or whatever. It is the, the worm has both genital pore and uterine pore. This uterine pore produces the eggs continuously, so all the segments are, as we see, broader than long. They don't have to grow into elongate segments or gravid segments afterwards because all the eggs come out ready. These are the eggs of Diphilobothrium latum. Here is the egg as we see it in the stool sample. The arrow here is noting us that there is here the operculum and there is a knob in the other pole of the uh, egg. And here are also two eggs in another microscope slide but we have to know that all the eggs here are unembryonated that means they have um, one cell stage embryo and they develop outside the body in the water the diphilobothrium latum eggs measure about 80 by 40 5 micromillimeter. There is a small knob visible at the opposite side of the operculum. This is the characteristics of that. Here also another slide showing us the adult worm. And this is the natural look of the adult worm coming out from the patient and we see that the mature segments here have dark spots all over 
عاملة بالظبط زي شريط الحبش اللي كانوا بيلعبوا بيه الأطفال زمان قبل ما يطلع الديناميت والمفرقعات الجامدة اللي موجودة دلوقتي ده كانوا بيخبطوا عليه بطوبة ولا بزلطة عشان يفرقع والحتت دي اللي فيها اللي كانت بتفرقع هنا ده الشكل بتاع اليوترس which is having the eggs giving it a darker color than the surrounding parts of the segment. This is a salmon fish infected with the clerocercoid here. We enlarge it to see that there are several clerocercoids inside the infected fish. Now we come to pathogenesis of diphylobothrium. Um, there is usually intestinal disturbances as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea. Um, neurological manifestations as irritability and insomnia and rarely some convulsions due to secretions of the worm. The main and the dangerous part of its pathogenesis is megaloblastic anemia because the adult worm competes with vitamin B12 on the intrinsic factor which is present in small intestine it is feeding on this intrinsic factor especially so when we have the extrinsic factor of vitamin b12 there is no formation of vitamin b12 in the intestine and thus we'll have megaloblastic anemia as a result of infection its diagnosis is very easy because it produces a, a tremendous amount of eggs every day as well as some of the old mature segments are shed with feces so the patient comes giving the doctor what was present in the, the, in the stools and they know it, the local people there know that they have a infection with diphylobothrium or they call it a cystode or a, a ribbon-like worm. So its diagnosis is easy. Also, when we perform blood picture we'll see that the patient has megaloplastic anemia treatment is by niclosamide which is a chewable tablet which uh, are not absorbed from the intestine and they affect the worm causing it to detach from the intestine prevention and control is by controlling the good cooking of fish and smoking of fish and the uh, control of the reservoir hosts which are fish eating mammals around the community. There is something what we call sarganosis. This disease is caused by another species of diphylobothrium present in animals, especially in dogs, and it is present in the Far East mainly and also in Latin America. This infection is infection of human tissues by the pleurocercoid larva of Pyrometra erinaceae or diphylobothrium. Mansonoides. 
This is called the adults live in the small intestine of dogs and cats, while the eggs, when discharged with feces in the water, they are taken also by cyclops. So the first intermediate host is the cyclops, which in which the procercoid is present. The second intermediate host is frog or snake or reptile or some birds or mammals which have the pleurocircoid. Uh, some paratenic hosts also can carry the same stages like uh, crayfish or any water creatures. The mode of human infection by the spargenum or sparganosis is either when they swallow the cyclops containing the procercoid in contaminated impure water. Another thing is eating raw or undercooked flesh of the second intermediate host containing the pleurocercoid, either the frogs or the snakes or reptiles sometimes they have it in in their meals also folk medicine by applying infected flesh of snakes or frogs or whatever such animals as a foment or poultice on the wounded or inflamed eye or inflamed wound and thus the spargena migrates to the warmer tissues and invades the tissues of the sick human being. According to the invaded tissues, there is ocular sparganosis or ocular infection which produces conjunctivitis and severe inflammation. Also, there is dermal infection when it is put on, as we said before, on a wound or on an inflamed area as poultice. And uh, there is local inflammation and edema. Also, pulmonary infection due to swallowing of the cyclops can lead to pulmonary hemorrhage, while if it reaches brain with circulation, it may cause death or may cause a severe lesion. Also, the patient may suffer from pain, fever, and shows eosinophilia. Death of the larva may cause intense reaction in the place where it is lodged. Diagnosis is usually by X-ray and the also by tonography. Uh, it is mainly radiological diagnosis. Sometimes if it is present in the eye, we can see it and extract it as we'll know later. Um, it, is, it is treated by surgical removal when never possible. Also, we can give painkillers anti-inflammatory drugs and steroids to lessen the inflammatory action. Also, its prevention is very easy by boiling water to get rid of cyclops and also by health education to the local people to cook their food thoroughly or to make better treatment or proper treatment for their inflamed eyes or inflamed wounds. This is a picture of ocular sparganosis. Here is the sparganum with this red part around is a very inflamed conjunctiva. Here it is pulled outside the conjunctiva to it is treated surgically.
There is another type of pleurocercoids called Sparginum proliferum. Sparginum proliferum was discovered in Japan and in America. The adult has an obscure life cycle. We don't know with which is the first or the second intermediate host or the definitive host itself. When the pleurocercoid infects man, it can multiply in a bizarre shape because it usually branches endlessly to it gives many lateral branches inv invading the surrounding tissues like a malignant tumor. Initially, there are nodular lesions which become itchy. Then the skin later becomes thickened and the prognosis is poor because when we cut it, it may go with bloodstream to other places like a malignant tumor. And the larva pro proliferates endlessly, so it has a poor. Um, now we come to the end of the lecture. Thank you for listening, and inshallah, see you in the next in the next lecture.